Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous. It keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Reverend Dr. David Binden on the Good Life Devotion brought to you by the Mega Light Mission, the church for this generation. Wow, praise the Lord. A very big hallelujah. It's such a great joy to be sharing fellowship with you today on this special episode of the Good Life Devotion. It has been an amazing week, hasn't it? Yeah. I believe now you know what quality life is and you have been made wise by the scriptures to spend your time and your energies and your resources Invest into grooming your spirit. Listen, invest into grooming your spirit. There are sicknesses you will not suffer. There are troubles that will not come near you. There are challenges you rule over by just grooming your spirit. That's why I said no amount of money is too much to spend in getting materials. Get data, download these messages, and listen to them over and again. Invest in coming for the New Creations Conference where you can receive truth to have the divine nature in you to be exhibited. That is what the world needs. Christians living as humans, they don't add anything to the world because we are not humans. Being born again makes us deities inside. And that life must not be encased in humanity. It must be exhibited in our homes, in our communities, in our businesses, in our political career and everything. But how can we do this? It takes the teaching of the word. So if you have ever missed any of the new Christian conferences, this year don't. Save towards it. Prepare towards it. It is worth it. Your plane ticket, your accommodation, everything is important. If you're in Accra, accommodation and getting there, it's important. Prepare for it and be there. You need to groom your spirit. Don't be a child of God who is so weak and being deceived and buffeted by unrealities in the world. How can you be born again and need deliverance? How can you be born again and believe something like you are spiritually married? How can you be born again and simple dreams are terrorizing your life? How can you be born again and simple, simple issues you can't give a command to get things sorted out by the Spirit? There's so much more in Christ, wonderful uh, viewer. But all we need is the truth. By the grace of God, about next month, I'm going to be releasing a book on the Holy Spirit. These are materials you should get. Gather them in the teachings of the word. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. And in the blood emotion and all that, the things we sell to you, we don't sell to make profit. You only pay for the printing. If you decide to sow a seed by adding more, that's you. Because the gospel is not for sale, whether you package it in any way or the other. I want to inspire you this morning that the decision you've made to invest into your spirit, don't resign that decision. Keep on that track. Spend your time, your energy in grooming your spirit so that you can live in perfect peace. That you can live a life of completeness, soundness, welfare, and peace. To the extent that no matter what you hear and what happens around you, you are unperturbed. You are closing on in the glory of God. 
remaining untouched. When, you see, the devil doesn't like people to hear things like this. And evil men don't like others to hear things like this. They always want men to be kept under by fear. But there is a life better than that. It is wickedness for a human being to be ruling tyrannically over another human being. No. In every human being is the potential of God. And God doesn't like it. But you know, wicked people and people in authority and the rest, they want many to be ignorant so that they can manipulate them and rule them. What good, what benefit do you derive from ruling another human being? But when you know the truth, Jesus said, the truth will make you walk in liberty. Today, our topic is enjoy your world. After you are born again and filled with the Spirit, one of the things that you need to learn to do to be able to groom your spirit is to learn to enjoy your world. The topic is intentional. We are not saying that enjoy this world. We are saying enjoy your world. Right. What's our main scripture for today? Proverbs 23, verse 6. It says, My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. This is Papa God talking to us. Hmm. We have here in the that we said that the third step to a quality life is to start enjoying your world. Note that your world here is different from the world. We didn't say enjoy the world. We said, enjoy your world. Now that you are born again, you are God's son or God's daughter. He knows you personally. And you occupy a unique place in his heart. Your world is your personal niche. In Christ. Many don't know there is something about their world. They have been so distracted by the business of things in this world that they have never thought about their world. A wonderful viewer. With the over 7 billion people on the earth, I'm glad to announce to you that if you are born again, God knows you personally. There is a place for you in the heart of God. Have you ever thought about this? The day it dawns on you, and I pray that even as I'm sharing with you now, it will dawn on you. The day it dawns on you that you alone can have audience with God as though there was no other person on the earth. That you can have a world, and in fact, there is, not that you can have, you have a world made of you and God alone, and nothing else. Nothing else matters in that world. Many have never stepped into the reality of that world. Because the physical and the busyness of this physical world has always blocked their minds and, and, and occupied their thinking until they cannot be separated into this real world of this. But this is the cause of wickedness. It is the cause of loneliness and suicide. Because life seems to be so big that it is meaningless to people. So when people sit there and think about life and it's like, what is all this life about? I'm nothing. If I die, that's the end. They, be, they become so atrocious and wicked. Go to them, life means nothing. They don't mind killing people. They don't mind destroying property. They don't mind becoming, I mean, very hardcore criminals. And that's why even people who get into political power, somebody gets into power and he wants to change constitution to remain forever in power and do, and do things, several things all around the world. Why? Because they feel, no, life is just life. 
I've come to me that I'll live and also die. And when I die, that's the end. So they want to be as wicked as they can or as whatever as they want to be. Why? They don't know of this world. And the poor and the weak and the downtrodden, when they try to fight hard and they are not getting away, they, they withdraw into emotionalism, become so depressed and sad and never amount to anything. And they remain subservient to these other humans who have become wicked. So wickedness seems to be ruling. But the days have come and here are they. Where those wickedness, they are all aborted. The pomp of man is aborted by the presence of the Holy Ghost. Haven't you seen when King Herod made himself master? He gave a speech and everyone said, this one is not a man, it's a God. Instantly, worms ate him up. Where is his pomp? Where is majestic glory? You know, the church, because we've neglected the Holy Ghost, we've made people who are wicked to look like they are in charge. They come and terrorize people. They come and do things and frighten people. What are you, <laughs> you're talking about the Spirit of God. You frightening God? Go and ask the book of Nazar. He thought he was everything until God made him a beast for 70 years. So human beings who are wicked and want to rule and want to control things, they specialize in frightening and threatening the subordinates. And because they have never been in their world, they don't know what it means. Don't allow yourself to be a victim of wickedness in this world. If you are born again and filled with the Spirit, you are God. And you are operating in the name that are that name, every knee and, uh, I mean, beastly human activity bows. This is the church. That's why Jesus was born. He says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevent it. It doesn't matter what all these organizations in the world they are doing. Jesus, the son of the living God, he said, I will build my church and no government, no president, no organization can oppose it. Because the church never knew and didn't give him his place, over years, it looks like all these things have won. But I'm telling you, they are melting under the power of the fastest and the widest move God on the earth right now. So there is a place for you. There is a niche for you in God. God knows you personally. He knows your name. You know, that is why the Bible talks about being born again as being baptized into the body. The body of Christ is a whole person. Now, look at it this way. The moment you eat food, when the food is digested, it becomes part of your body forever. Maybe a molecule is added to your kidney and a molecule is added to your lung or somewhere, but it becomes part of your body forever. In the same way, when you get baptized into Christ, and I don't mean what I'm about to say, I mean being born again, you become part of the body. You may be part of somewhere in the ear, somewhere in the knee, somewhere in the finger, I don't know, but surely you are part. And God knows where you are located. That is how special you are. That is why it pains God for Christians to feel beggarly and unworthy and come under. So when God sees all the things going on in the church today, he just wondered, do these people know who they are? So he says, oh, I've seen princes walk and I've seen beggars ride on horses. It doesn't make sense. Much of the praying and the begging in the church today, doesn't, it doesn't match up with who the church is. That's why you need to be at a new Christian conference. So, we are saying that you have a place in God. There's a niche for you in the body of Christ. There's a niche for you in God's heart. Then we said, being full of the Holy Spirit, now spend time enjoying times alone with God. Learn to separate yourself from the physical world and to be in your world with Him. There is a world you have. It is the world of you and your father. We said that in that world, it is you and your daddy. Oh, hallelujah. A lot of Christians haven't known what it means to pray. I keep on saying that many Christians are not praying. And when I say someone says, mm, there's always an all night in my church. We're always having 20 days and 40 days. No, that's not prayer. All that kind of loud noise and shouting together and praying, 
many people are just, just walking about. There's nothing going on in their spirits. I believe in corporate prayer. But real prayer is when you are withdrawn in your heart. And you're having that tête a tête with God, your father. A lot of Christians are always busy and shouting and praying. I'm not against praying aloud. Because the scriptures are not against that. But they are praying without a consciousness of who they are, they are talking to. So that when you listen to the content of people's prayer, <laughs> you will laugh. They don't even believe in what they are saying. Because if what they really, what they are asking is really happening, <laughs> the whole world will just melt in one day. So a lot of people don't even fear Christian prayers. There are people today, if, you, if, if a fetish priest tells them, you, you will see. And a pastor tells them, you, you will see. The pastor one, they're just going to sleep. But a fetish priest one, they'll be running. Their eyes moving up and down, looking for support and deliverance. <laughs> Why? Imagine we are in a world now that people fear the word of a fetish priest. Who is serving spirits? Than the word of a minister of God. Why? Is he, is he really a minister of God? We don't even know. Is he a minister of the world or a minister of God? We don't know. Because many people are ministers of what they don't know. Do we mean we are ministers of this living God? <laughs> then whose words should people write? You mean you are, you are speaking on behalf of God? Because... Some people don't even, that's the, some part, part of the world they don't even want to talk about God. Because the kind of prayers Christians pray, if God was real to them, they wouldn't be the way they are. But why? Because they are making so much noise with that reality. They are not actually praying. They are just sounding Christian and religious. Pray, 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 pray. For nothing. We want to know God. They have never withdrawn into this place to be alone with God. To enjoy their world. That is real prayer. When you learn to spend time in your world, when you come out, with what, that's what Jesus did. How many times did Jesus stand to shout and do a lot of noise? He would dream to go and pray. Why? He wanted to be in his world. You don't know the secret of Jesus. And when he came out, the signs and the wonders were happening. If a child of God, you will learn to enjoy your world. You'll be amazed. You have a world, and you need to be aware. In this world, what happens? We said here that. In this world, it is you and your daddy. Your heart is glued to him. Your eyes are on him. And you are in a fellowship of intimate love and divine spiritual intercourse. And the activities in this world, you begin to study the word with joy. You begin to express your love for God. You begin to worship him and you begin to receive love from him and divine instructions about several things about life. There are some people, they can't remember the last time they said, Father, I love you. No, it's all about, Father, as I clap my hands, as I jump, as I somersault, as I do this, let this happen, let this one die. Let, how? What is happening? They've never said, Father, I love you. For many people, when they say, I love you some, to some lady somewhere or somebody somewhere trying to bribe somebody. And some people, they have never heard God say, I love you. When was the last time you heard God say, I love you? Maybe some ladies might have heard it from their husbands or some people. But there are people who have never heard God say, I love you. Which father is it that has never told his son that I love you? You say you are born again. For how many years? 20 years. When was the last time your father said he loved you? You haven't heard. Which father is he? When was the last time you said to your father, I love you? There is no reality in people's relationship with God. It's all about what they can get from God. You know, many people have made church or God a pharmacy shop. Do you know that nobody loves a pharmacy shop? They go there because they have a need. You see somebody there, you want something for a headache. Somebody for constipation. Something for uh, uh, diarrhea. Somebody for something. While somebody wants to, 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 to move his bowel, another person wants to stop his bowel. They are all in the pharmacy shop buying drugs. 
But when they buy the drugs, they go. They don't have a relationship with the pharmacist. But God is not like that. God is your father. He's not there just to be killing your enemies, giving you breakthroughs, sending you to, uh, giving you visas and marriages and children. If these are the things that God exists for, then there's no need for Jesus. When you pray and pray and pray, fasting for a visa to travel and go to somebody's land, when God hasn't asked you to go there. The book of Acts says that God has predetermined where you should live. If you are born in Ghana, stay in Ghana. If God says move, he will say move. People are in Ghana eating proper food. Young and unpersian and proper food. People are hustling somewhere for just one burger they are not getting. And you want to go and add that to that issue. They are tightening immigration laws. Many immigrants are not happy with certain presidents who are tightening immigration laws. Why? God is not a fool to make you be born in Liberia or be born in another country. Of course, God can take you from one country to another for a particular place. But if God hasn't sent you somewhere and you run, it's a greener passage. Make the grass at your place green. Fasting and praying for visa. When somebody who doesn't even know Jesus is getting a visa. So is that the use of Jesus to be giving you visas? Is that the use of Jesus to give you a marriage? Young lady, instead of staying and, and doing the work of ministry and, 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 and grooming your spirit, you are jumping from meeting, prophetic meeting, for how to be you to get married. What life are you living? Many don't know. If you will learn to enjoy your world, you'll be so rich in the spirit. That is where grooming your spirit is. We said here that anyone who enjoys his world is unconscious of the evil in this world. All the fear, all the feeling of lack, loneliness, intimidation. If you spend time with God, you always come out seeing the world differently. The fear people fear, you don't know it. Because there is an atmosphere in you. You carry an atmosphere. You carry, but I would say that in the presence of the Israelites, the fear of God fell on others. The thing that destroys others cannot destroy you when you are in your world. This is not a secret. It's a serious thing Christians haven't learned to do. When people like Elijah were on the mountains, alone, what were they doing? They were in their world. When Assyrians were coming to arrest them, what did they happen? He redirected them. But today people are busy fasting and praying for things that they would just do by nature if they spent time in their world. We said here that if the mirages of the world's circumstances try to hang themselves to the one who has spent time in his world, what he does is he quietly releases a word and then the situations melt. He reigns over the physical realm of life with ease because he lives and enjoys the real world. That is his world with the Father. Be serious and practice this. Acting on these three principles, be born again, fill with the Spirit, and learning to enjoy your world will make you have a life of great quality. If you are a child of God, you are filled with the Spirit, but all you know is just be speaking in tongues for physical, material things, buildings. People are praying for things that God said they will be added. Spend time to enjoy God. Spend time to love God. Spend time. So there are a lot of people, they don't know where they are going. They've never heard God direct them. All that they feel in their emotions is what they carry out. But there is a rich world of lifting your hands, of, of lifting your voice, of lifting your heart, and just loving God. Declaring, Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. As your people declare your mighty works, you lift your heart and sing to God. Alone, not always beggarly songs. Learn to believe in your world. You've got to listen to this message over and again. They can call us and we can help you. You have been watching me today and you have not yet received Jesus. That's the first step. What does it mean to receive Jesus? It means believe that Jesus Christ, by his resurrection, made the life you need to be born of God available and declare him as Lord to get that life into you, to be born of God. If you want to do that, say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, 
With all my heart, I believe that by your resurrection, you made eternal life available. I receive this life into my spirit as I declare you Lord of my life. By this, I am born again. Hallelujah. From then, this is all your heart. You are born again. All you need to do is to call us. We'll help you get filled with the spirit and you can learn how to enjoy your world with the Holy Ghost. It has been an awesome week. And I believe that your life is never the same. Get to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Watch these messages over and again. Download them and share them. Or share them on YouTube with your friends. And your life will never be the same. If you have been born again over this week, no matter where you are and in which country, by the Spirit I pray for you that you find a Bible teaching church. Look for one. Introduce yourself. Let them help you to be planted and continue to grow in your fellowship in the Spirit. So I come away again in our next episode. One thing is sure. Life is good. Enjoy. Miss the previous episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binden? Did you know you can watch previous episodes of the Good Life Devotion? Yes, you can. Simply go to YouTube and type Dr. David Binden to catch up on any teaching you missed and watch as many times as you wish. Subscribe to the Dr. David Binden channel to receive daily updates and do like and share with family and friends. Keep watching the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binden on this channel. Life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for watching the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bendan, brought to you by the Megalite Mission. To fellowship with any of our branches near you, call 055-792-7744. Follow Dr. David Bendan on Facebook by simply liking the Good Life Devotion page and the David Bendan Life page and receive daily nuggets to enable you exhibit God's divine life in you. Also watch previous episodes of the Good Life Devotion on YouTube on the Dr. David Bendan channel and you will be blessed. Visit our website today and have access to life transforming teachings and materials by Dr. David Bendan and Mrs. Cindy Bendan. Your life will never be the same. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.